Okay, so hopefully everyone can hear us. I've got this in my ear so that it's not disturbing, but I may pull it out. Okay, I'm going to try to get the handouts um, to everybody. Let's see if we can. Changing the audio. Yeah. Yeah. I have some I have some folders here that have some more information about the program and can give a little bit of back backing to it. Some information and a little bit of something to write with. All right, on. There you go. Thank you. 
mention that so that everyone knows. Um, the sheets of paper we do at the end. That so yes. Is there anyone? So that um, she, she can either scan them if we want to take it back or have some record of them. So yes. whatever you write on here is going to go back into Thank you. HISD. Um, so yeah. it'll just go into my folder. Um, okay. And then we just look at the key points that were mentioned. And really, it's just to set up a goal for the campus. It's not, uh, it's not like a big file that we keep archived, but it's, it's just to find a goal. Getting a water system, like the, the irrigation system for the sky prairie, maybe fixed because it was broken more often than it was. Oh, no, let's get to the bottom of this and yeah. solve the problem. And so it doesn't have to be shattering. Right, no. right. So um, we also want to keep it in the scope of what we can do on campus or what's in our hands because there's a lot of things that kind of like the school is, we have to go through the district and just put things are not doing that. So, um, just in the school of this. Thank you. Okay. I won't be able to write that easily. Okay. You're, are you, you want me to hold it? No, I'm okay. I'll, I'll write afterwards. Okay. I've been there since the end of the last two. <laughs> <laughs> um, so, People have told us that this is a very warm and inviting space. That's exactly what we want it to be, and we certainly want that to continue to be that way. We have been the recipient of various different awards going back a few years now um, with the different levels of status of being a, a, a space family friendly school. And so we always want to certainly meet those. Uh, so all of our visitors will check in at the front desk here. Um, and I guess now we're going to, I guess, go on tour, see some of the different components of the building and maybe address some questions along the way. Thank you so much. Um, for the physical environment, the first question that we see is the school visually appealing and the school friend interest. What three things did you notice? So for me, I noticed the static characteristics and accuracy. I see the staff are well they have not they have not worked. So uh, that also comes from the school level. Um including the experience kind of reacting to the wall. But even as we walk around the campus, it's not quite a wall. For a physical environment, one area we'd like to see is does the school have any area that may be a safety hazard? So that can be like exposed tables or you know, maybe rug buttons and things like that's traveling. So that's yeah. more district wide, that's kind of outside the scope of the campus. So um, there's limited things that yeah. maybe parents or school staff can do. Yeah. I'm glad that you asked that question though. Um, we have not always had this second set of doors here, um, so I don't know how many years ago it was. We did add the second um, set of panels of doors just to enhance the security. Obviously, for visitors or whoever has them, um, we add this another level of security, which anyone uh, they have to also be buzzed in this. I also noticed that the doors by default are locked during the school hours, which is great. And then as soon as I pressed the button, somebody immediately responded. And that was great because you have security, but at the same time you have this friendliness and the friendly behavior. Oh, yes. Yeah. Very yeah. I was going to say, I don't think in six plus years I've ever noticed yeah. that. <laughs> this parent is not a plant. <laughs> yeah, I've always liked that about this. 
and it's not just a square it's an it's kind of a yeah. feels very very, very organic did anyone else have <laughs> yeah and online can uh, put anything in the chat or keep notes so that you can fill out uh, the questionnaire whenever it gets sent at the end We're going to block them right now, so they will be in class report. Another 45 minutes or so. Okay. I'm going to clear the whole system. Yeah. No, I don't want to be caught on there. Okay. Okay. Just wherever you think. Uh, <laughs> <laughs> yeah. No. See if I can make the people online get really dizzy. Looking at the physical Yeah. 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 Is like if it's um, asking for students or young ones that come in, but uh, plus that we have it. Do we have our demographics for this year? Yes, I will get back to you. Um, uh, <laughs> Pop quiz. Yeah, we have our quiz. As I mentioned before, we basically have four wings. Downstairs is social studies, physical education, English, art language. Upstairs is science. And we also have, uh, 
I guess you could call it a historic building um, that it was in existence prior to this being constructed. And we utilize that on arts department. There is a visual arts classroom and a theater classroom and then a small 105 seat theater. So we have um, some small productions with big impacts. <laughs> Um, we have to have multiple of those because, again, this is about pretty much an office one. Um, but hopefully we'll get a chance to, to visit that and you can see some of the banners that we uh, have accumulated over the course of time. Uh, going to state, the UIL one I played multiple times and actually winning state uh, twice. Any questions so far? I have the numbers for this year. The, um so black or African American, 10%, Asian, 31%, white, 18%, Hispanic, 34%, two or more races, 6%, and other or ancestry. So we're excited about it. And then I know you mentioned celebrating your, your students in different situations. And we're excited to bring it to your students who um, are doing that, seeing that in the campus. But knowing that they're, they're represented and hearing it open in the front. And then I see the Um, and speaking of poetry, this National Fest, High Fest, as we call it, um, we wanted to schedule it for November 1st, and I think this year is, it was going to coincide with uh, Diwali. Um, the seniors reached out and asked if we could postpone that because November 1st is a big deadline for college applications. And so again, we always prioritize the students' need. And so um, we have a, a tentative date. It's not official just yet. That's just one of the cultural observations and celebrations that we will have. And that's not only for the Carnegie uh, students and employees, but it's open to the public. All right, do we want to make our way down the hallway? Okay, uh, again, this is mostly social studies, and towards the end, we have the physical education classroom that leads into the multi purpose area, which is uh, gym and cafeteria. It also, we have six UIL sports and various different extracurricular sports uh, where we host uh, competitions in the gym. So you'll get a chance to see that as well. Um, we have enhanced the entrance. You can see the um, CBHS. Uh, just going to add to the aesthetics here. But I, the multi-purpose room using during AP testing, um, we're able to test a large number of students there. And the graphics on the window also assist with some, uh, what's the word, potentiality, uh, I guess, uh, where the students can take the test and not be distracted or, or interrupted. Uh, and this way, we also have Lockers, we assign a locker to all of our freshmen and sophomores. It's optional for juniors and seniors if they select to do so. A lot of the textbooks and materials are now digital, so there may not be a, a great need for lockers, but uh, we do assign that to, again, freshmen and sophomores. Um, and once we're outside, this is a nice view, but you'll get a chance to see um, some of the dynamics outside that uh, are used some specialized courses that we have here. And stop me if anybody has any questions or comments along the way. And if you'd like to step into any classroom, you're welcome to do so as well. This room is right here. You can't record students, so. Right. <laughs> so this is your class. 
Christmas movies last night. Smooth supplies. <laughs> We always look at the company. So I think what we'll do is maybe go upstairs so that we can have a bird's eye view. We can push them and also go down with you. Uh, we have tried to make great use out of each and every space, including under the stairs, many times. Students will uh, assemble there for a uh, small group work, individual work, so on and so forth. Students um, have the opportunity to eat throughout the campus um, and be involved in various different activities. Uh, outside of just eating your lunch, they can go to tutorials, um, they can meet for club and organizational meetings, uh, pair up with students. Because we are a Vanguard program, we have to provide special programming. Uh, in three different ways, um, for individual, small group, and whole group. And many times students, I'm sorry, teachers will assign students to specific groups, but other times students have the opportunity to self-select their group in order to work together to complete a certain responsibility or task. And so you'll see a lot of that during the lunchtime as well. So the seventh period, uh, the last period, um, at least uh, four days of the week, uh, is an athletics period. So sort of, uh, you'll see outside these are our students uh, interested in UIL baseball. And on the field, you'll see at the far left is a sand volleyball court, which is very unique to HISD, but it's something that Carnegie has had uh, even prior to this facility at the old school. It was an Eagle Scout project and the students absolutely loved it. So it's something that we certainly wanted to incorporate into our new building. Um, which by the way, this is the 12th year that we've been in existence in this uh, location. Um, but this is the, uh, the infield for UIL uh, baseball. Uh, we also have UIL soccer, in which they compete pretty much in the middle of the athletic fields. Uh, half court basketball. Basketball is extracurricular right now. Uh, but we also have a batting cage. And in that, the far end is um, the city of Houston asked if HISD would allow youth baseball to practice on the field. And so we were open to that. After hours and weekends, we're also open to the community. So we are an extension of Wiley Park, which you can't see from the trees, but just right on the other side of the one-way street is Wiley Park, and we wanted to be accommodating to the neighborhood and, um, and the community. All right, if we go upstairs, you'll get a bird's eye view of the cafeteria and gym. Actually, before we go there, this is a banner. This was a uh, yep. This is from the old campus, and all the seniors actually signed it. Um, something of a keepsake or to remember not only them, but our uh, previous facility. It doesn't look like a lot, but trust me, there was magic there. <laughs> it was an effort about brick and mortar. It was really all about the So please watch your step. But you can see here again, this is a we call this the bird's nest. Set up right now are two practice courts. Those are outlined in red. But if you also, there's an outline in yellow. 
we utilize that for competition volleyball. And then what is outlined in white is competition basketball. We do set up the tables around the unit to help protect glory for our sports uh, competitions. Um, but all of the tables will be taken out during lunchtime and breakfast. Uh, and of course, our physical education classes take place in the So we get this multi-purpose. Uh, we have in-person meetings such as PTO. Uh, this is usually the location where we host that. And once again, a lot of the uh, AP testing, we have to test an entire grade. We can actually put them in here as well. Any questions? Yes, most certainly. And we didn't think about this when we opened the building, but we added the seating there to kind of accommodate the viewing of the competition. Policies and terms. Okay, certainly that's, that's a great start. Um, so we have 855 students as of right now, um, grades 9 through 12. Um, because all of our students are identified gifted, gifted, and talented, um, Creativity is a huge component of that. Um, so dress code, I'll start with there. Um, we don't necessarily, well, we don't have a uniform, but we do have a dress code. Um, that's part of our handbook, which is we give every student an agenda, and I'll kind of come back around to that. But the dress code is part of the student handbook. It's also located on our um, uh, website, school website. Um, we do ask that students, illustrate um, their student ID, as well as a lanyard. The lanyards are color-coded according to grade level, so that just by viewing that color, we can see if they're a freshman, sophomore, a junior, senior. When administrators go into classrooms to do spot observations, instruction and learning, um, a lot of the classes are uh, for one grade level, but we also have some mixed classes, and so, we can see, um, oh, we might have a freshman in uh, pre AP chemistry, or a lot of the math classes might have two, three, or maybe even four levels. Um, there are exponentially more students than there are adults here, so that's a way of us identifying uh, the students. And then, of course, the IDs. We want students to uh, utilize the student ID as somewhat of an official government ID. We want to prep them for many of them are going to have driver's licenses and visas and all that kind of stuff. Um, there are certain parameters that the district requires that we have on the front and the back side of the IDs. Um, we want students to utilize those IDs to check out the library book or go to the punchline because it makes it such a, an expeditious process. Um, if they need assistance from their counselors or an administrator. Um, those are some of the things that um, we want students to be able to utilize their IDs for. Plus, if they travel and they don't have government-issued ID, driver's license, or whatever, they can utilize their school IDs for those purposes as well. Um, any other questions about policies I might be able to answer? Oh, back to the agenda. Thank you. So, um, our curriculum here is uh, very rigorous and it's advanced. The majority of the classes are pre-AP and AP uh, advanced placement. And so uh, 
If you miss a debut, you miss a lot. Um, but, but planners are great organizational tools, especially students uh, who are becoming acclimated to such a rigorous program. So we ask that the students utilize their planners to um, write their assignments. Um, it's also a great communication tool between school and home. Uh, the parent can see that the student has accomplished the task for that evening the homework or make an initial that. The student can return the planner to the teacher uh, and the teacher can initial that. The teacher can also initial that the student has recorded uh, what those tasks and responsibilities are. So that's just um, a little bit of information regarding the use. Um, we also have a ninth grade email that uh, Ms. Matsu was assistant principal sends every Friday. It's um, a snapshot or an advanced view of things that are upcoming in all of the students' classes, but also certain events that may take place on campus, a reminder about certain holidays and professional development and that kind of stuff. So um, organization is uh, a big thing that we try to assist not just with students, but also parents as well. Um, and so, yeah. I, I can add also to the fact that we receive so many different middle schools, up to 50 different middle schools. So because of that, um, having a different also for them to learn and come from schools where they did not have a lot of money. So this is not something they can't expect. So this is a way to help everyone to learn how to become a great and the teachers are pushing for this, especially use I hope that every week, every week is over. <laughs> and I have a son who forgot about his books and stuff, so I just, it's just a reminder for me and him to just check out. <laughs> I'm glad you mentioned that because um, we do have students who enter Carnegie as freshmen from so many different middle schools and backgrounds. We understand that um, it might be an easy acclimation for students uh, who are accustomed to such a rigorous program, but then others, uh, for no fault of their own, it may take them a little bit more time to become accustomed. And so the planner and the night grade email or mechanisms to assist them, so much so that um, sophomores and parents of sophomores and even juniors, they're like, well, can you get a sophomore a letter or a junior letter? Um, but we also, like to encourage responsibility. So that's why we focus on the ninth grade level for that. And then hopefully the students have become accustomed to that. And so they can acclimate and matriculate uh, from year to year uh, so that they are responsible students by the time they uh, graduate from Carnegie. I think you had a question. No, I was going to say that my son comes from a school that's not from the NC struggling because of these. He was not used to having the amount of homework and the rigorous uh, aspects of the school are so different than the other one. The other one he was a teacher. This one he's, he's having to actually <laughs> work study a lot. <laughs> yeah. So it's yeah. yeah. And that and yeah. that's what actually we uh -huh. we we've been uh, noticing for a lot of yeah, for a long time now that when they move from so many different uh, schools, then getting used to how it works, how things work here, mm -hmm. will take them a bit. And the part of it, so the agenda, the ninth grade email, but also we have the clubs, uh, we have certain clubs specific for ninth graders to put them together. That is one of the tools that they use. And there is also the peer review and the strength teachers. So they have many, many ways to get help. We are pushing, pushing for them to go to <laughs> And that's where there is the difference between middle school and high school. That it has to go. Yeah, that, that, is, that is the main problem that I'm seeing right now, that before everything used to be given to them, so they're not used to going ask the question because they had it in their hands. Now they're having to actually look for it. That, that, that could be one thing that we can maybe tell or convey to the middle school so that maybe at eighth grade they'll start doing something similar. Of course, not that rigorous, but something like that. 
<laughs> I've been working for a long time to get them yeah. to go to prepare a binder yeah. program so I get them to be So we'll make our way down this hallway. Um, this is a combination of uh, math and science. Uh, the science rooms are just a classroom and lab. And so they're a little bit larger than the uh, typical uh, math classrooms. Um, so we'll make our way down to one of our three conference rooms. I wanted to add that uh, the state has certain uh, requirements that we must have for gifted students. It is our task to challenge your students. And again, especially for our incoming freshmen, we know that many of them are uh, becoming acclimated uh, to our program. Uh, but we have a very dynamic freshman team of teachers who collaborate very frequently. Um, they're very much aware of the needs of our students and very accommodating and very nurturing. As we uh, progress throughout the school year, um, you can see uh, a little bit more faster pace with some of the requirements uh, in some of the classes. Um, but it's very important that uh, our students understand that learning is very practical. What they're learning in English may be complemented in the social studies class. What they're learning in math may be complemented some of the same skills that they're learning in science and maybe even PE. So um, that's the kind of collaboration that the teachers have because again, they understand the need to uh, acclimate our students to our uh, program.
to the point where um, I got calls, they were wondering if the school was actually functioning or was it closed because they never saw kids. <laughs> yeah. But the entire um, perimeter of the campus is so we are open eight to nine. I mentioned the athletic field, but the turn for us field for the city of Houston, hundreds of staff in it. Originally, it was going to be um, as well as the stats of the field. And this is kind of like a piece of memory. They're all like this board, so. And we do have more. So, students park and dismissal when they leave. So, the gates are. Yeah. And also kind of in sports. And any person can always walk up and so First plant that you see here, and also in the interior foyer, and that's all. It's all involved. Various different activities, so they need to have to go. Also, this little kind of the area that. Downstairs, that part, it's been so hot, they, they're just now starting to be able to see. They are. Oh, yes. The rooftop. So I'm going to say. We also have an old school because we just like to study outside. It's a school after the been. No, no. So uncharacteristically quiet. <laughs> twenty. It was twenty-two. Let me see if it's still if the. Is. She only started advertising yesterday. So that's a lot. Yeah. It's twenty. Uh, Twenty-one. Uh, 
I was not cognizant of this until you know, a couple of years ago we started having here and that they had not ended a tour during so so we're happy to just the RSVP is um, sort of coming in, so. I will. I'm going to put in a pitch for Miss Mooney that uh, when, <laughs> she's going to need parents to do magnet tours, and every year, uh, these ladies can attest. Parents are like, I can't give a tour. I don't know enough to give a tour. First of all, you don't have to know anything because the kids do like 99.9% .9 of the work. Really, we're there just to give our opinions, and you're entitled to your opinion as a parent. <laughs> it's it's your experience. That's really the all we do on the tour is kind of reflect on yeah this is what I thought it was going to be like this is actually what it's like for me you know make your choice because a lot of people are like they just go oh it's ranked here this is where I want my kid to go and as you all now know that's not necessarily the, the right way to choose and so that being said now that you've actually had a tour you're a little more qualified <laughs> you might be able to give a, a, a fun fact or something um, if you were to sign up to help because it is um hard to get people to sign up i know i a lot of us probably arrange things to be here true i'll, I'll add on to that pitch for magnet tours when i have done it in past years really the parents are chaperones like our job is to walk around with everybody and make sure that all the people who stop into the bathroom which they don't have come back and that we you know deliver the same number of people back to the gym that we left with the kids are doing the work it's a joyous experience um to hear schools articulate their experience in the past of the school and when they sign up for it it's almost a joy because they they are so anxious to want to participate and not go off this room. It was just amazing to me. Um, but we also love their perspective, the perspective students, and especially our perspective. We want to give a full picture of this life. And of course, the students who lead the tours are mostly our group. They do a fantastic job. Excellent. Welcome. Ten minutes. Yeah. We also have parents of alumni and alumni from other years ago. Uh, one gentleman in particular uh, still comes back. And office offers his services to um, the students. So he's part of the school. <laughs> and we see this hall. This is our community uh, member. I wasn't sure if we had a community uh, member. Lisa. <laughs> yeah. He's doing work for Cape Cod student at Mount Holyoke. They were very proud to let everybody know yesterday that they got bumped up in the U.S. News and World. Speaking That's that Carnegie effect yeah. that she brings to the right. table. It's all her. <laughs> um, but I think hearing in my head when you talked about freshmen and sophomore in that acclimation class, uh, not polio, they, they, everybody does a writing seminar, freshman writing seminar. It's not uncommon, especially at they also limit first year students to 12 hours and they say because not all of the students come to the regular high school. So, you know, 
Page 12, hours before you overstress yourself taking too many classes, take 12 hours in your first semester, get used to it, and then you can ramp up. She is having a, what I understand is a fairly standard Carnegie experience at any school, which is she doesn't know what she's going to do with all her spare time. <laughs> <laughs> Playing in competition sports and being in two different musical groups. Well, right. That's what and I wouldn't be surprised if here she was tutoring someone. She may be, and I will definitely know that you said <laughs> Um, I always say that uh, we're very proud of her progress in the course of Carnegie uh, Flavor Meeting this year. I wasn't here uh, at the very start. Came as quick as I could. Um, I will never say that we're perfect in everything, so I love feedback. Good feedback is great, but bad feedback is also good because that illustrates areas where we can make improvements, and we always strive to do so. So uh, I welcome feedback from anybody. That's now. We think of something later. Uh, always receptive to. Oh, yeah. Can you look at all the things? Yeah. 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 Students are just very respectful, they'll hold the work open for you. Mm -hmm. That's that's something. Does Carnegie have a lot of specialists with you, and how does that work? So, I mean, Yes, and I think Miss Williams also had. Um, by a show of hands, we welcome our parents here. Who's a parent of a freshman?
I know that our students do very well engaging with each other across different grade levels. And a lot of that we see comes to fruition in our And a lot of the upperclassmen that we fought many years ago with the customer position to be top 10% of the class or whatever. My sense is that they really want to mentor for each other. And also for the students in the class at a grade level under. And so that kind of adds to their culture and our students. And you can see that by thinking that all the classes are played, the great big things in the region. They know what it means to me. And so they on their own created this. So the team, so it is their own machine. So it is a culture of the So there is going to be a competition in South. That helps where they help each other. So that's where, um, yeah, that's what I think we did. The school did a good thing. Um, to the north. I see here, I know last minute. Um, we have one. Is there any pleasure and big call? So, um, that was great. I'm glad that you all could. And um, I just wanted to put this to the meeting here that we have. So it's an opportunity for me to share organization. That, yeah, that would be great. I guess that way, if there's anything for PTO that we can, I've been wanting for us to do it for a long time. Um, I myself, so uh, I can send you mine because I, I gave away my last.